The 2024 budget was released by the government on April 16th, 2024, and there were shocking changes that have caused a lot of confusion and drama. I myself thought some of the drastic changes they are proposing may not go through, but as the June 25th, 2024 date approaches, these proposed changes are being put into effect. So I made this video to summarize the major changes affecting Canadians so that you can plan ahead. In today's video, I will be going over the tax changes for capital gains, tax breaks for entrepreneurs, and crypto reporting to the CRA. So let's jump right into it. Capital gains tax. Let's first address the elephant in the room. The capital gains inclusion rate is changing for the first time in over two decades. As you can see here, Canada's tax system has historically had a 50% inclusion rate when it comes to capital gains and losses since 2001. So the fact that the government is proposing to change the inclusion rate is going to have a domino effect and impact many parts of the current tax system, which the government has not yet released with the details on how to carry out this major change. You may be aware aware of other recent tax changes earlier this year when it came to bare trust filings in which the government and the CRA were not prepared for when it came to implementation of the proposed changes. For one, CRA put a pause on bare trust filings four days before the due date, which resulted in costly consequences and a lot of angry people. But now with the June 25th, 2024 timeline approaching, the proposed changes are supposed to take effect. So let's go over how this might impact you. How capital gains tax work. Just just to make sure that we are on the same page, let's go over the concept of capital gains and how it is currently being taxed. There are three main ways income gets taxed in Canada, earned income, capital gains, and dividends. You may be most familiar with earned income, which is a salary that you earn from your job. So if you earn, let's say $70,000 in salary, your taxes at the end of the day is about $17,000 in 2023. On the other hand, capital gains results from the sale of capital property, such as real estate, stocks, and crypto. And when you earn $70,000 in capital gains, only 50% is subject to tax. So you would essentially be taxed on only $35,000 of capital gains and your taxes would only be $4,500 in 2023. When you compare earned income like salary to capital gains, you are a lot more tax efficient when earning income as capital gains as you are only taxed on half of it. We will save the discussion for dividends in another video. Now with the budget 2023, for, the government's intention is to increase the inclusion rate on capital gains realized annually above $250,000 by amending the Income Tax Act effective June 25th, 2024. This means that the capital gains inclusion of 50% would not change up to the $250,000 threshold of capital gains for individuals. So if you made $250,000 in capital gains, the same 50% inclusion applies and only half of that or $125,000 would be subject to tax. However, every dollar above the $250,000 threshold would be subject to the new proposed inclusion rate of two thirds or 66.67%. So in most cases, if you have capital gains under $250,000, the new proposed changes won't be affecting you. However, if you do have capital gains from a one-off transaction, let's say from a sale of a summer cottage in which you have, let's say $300,000 in capital gains, you would be paying more in taxes. Let's go over an example to hit this home. If you made $300,000 in capital gains and you are in the highest marginal tax bracket of 53.5% before June 25th, all your capital gains are subject to the 50% inclusion rate. So that would simply mean 50% of $300,000, which is $150,000 times 53.5%, which is a marginal tax rate, you get total taxes of $80,250,000. However, after June 25th, there are now two tiers of capital gains. The first $250,000 would still be subject to the same 50% inclusion rate. However, the next $50,000 would now be subject to the new inclusion rate of 66.67%, which means that there is more capital gains subject to tax. The total taxes after June 25th would now be $84,708 based on 2023 tax rates, which result in about $4,500 more in taxes. So why the change to the capital gains tax? The purpose of this budget is to essentially tax the wealthy. According to this graph, the wealthier you are, 
the more other sources of income you have, such as capital gains and dividends, which tend to be more tax advantageous than earned income. According to the 2024 budget, the projected number of Canadians affected is 0.13% of all people with average gross income of $1.4 million, and it's not supposed to affect 99.87% of the Canadian population with an average gross income of $60,000. With this new capital gains inclusion rate, note that there will be no changes to the existing principal residence exemption, which means capital gains from the sale of your principal residence is 100% tax exempt, which means that even if you make a million dollars, you won't be taxed on any of that. Also, any income including capital gains is tax sheltered in accounts like your RRSP, RRIF, TFSA, FHSA, or RESP, and pension income or the capital gains earned by registered pension plans you and your spouse are a member of, as well as up to $250,000 every year in capital gains from selling a cottage, investment property, or other taxable investments such as stocks beyond the tax sheltered accounts. So what do you think about the new capital gains tax? Let me know in the comment section below. Now with capital gains, there is concern that it's going to affect small business owners who rely on the sale of their business for their retirement fund. We will also be going over the proposed tax changes that affect Canadian entrepreneurs. Two main tax breaks for entrepreneurs. There are currently two main tax breaks for entrepreneurs. The first is called the lifetime capital gains exemption, which means that an individual can be exempt for capital gains realized on the sale of qualified small business corporation shares of up to $1,016,836 in 2024. And this number is indexed to inflation. And with the 2024 budget, this lifetime capital gains exemption will further be increased to $1.25 million for sales happening on or after June 25th, 2024. Now the second tax break is called the Canadian Entrepreneurs Incentive. This is brand new and proposed as part of the budget 2024. In a nutshell, individuals may be eligible to only include one third of capital gains on the sale of qualifying shares for an additional $2 million in their lifetime. However, this $2 million won't be released all at once, but will be phased in increments of $200,000 per year, starting on January 1st, 2024, and then reaching a value of $2 million by January 1st, 2034. This means that individuals selling qualifying small business corporation shares can have up to $3.25 million in total exemption and partial exemption when selling shares of your small business, in which the $1.25 million is the lifetime capital gains exemption, so 100% tax free. And then the $2 million, which is a Canadian entrepreneur's incentive, where the inclusion rate is only 33.33% instead of the 66.67%. And this way, Canadian entrepreneurs are better off and save more in taxes for capital gains up to the $6.25 million mark. And then any capital gains after $6.25 million will be taxed higher than the previous tax regime due to the higher inclusion rate of 66.67% instead of the 50%. Capital gains tax for corporations. We had just gone over the impact that the changes in the capital gains inclusion rate will have for individuals, but there are more drastic changes for corporations. With the new inclusion rate of two thirds or 66.67%, this affects all capital gains earned by corporations. And there is no threshold like the $250,000 or above that exists for individuals. With that being said, apparently this would only affect about 12.6% of corporations that have capital gains income and the proposed changes shouldn't affect about 87.4% of corporations that have average taxable income of $174,000. So this is also affecting corporations that tend to be doing well financially. With the changes to the capital gains inclusion rate, this is going to be throwing off something called integration where essentially the money that you take out from the corporation and then tax at the shareholder level should be the same as if the shareholder were to receive that income personally. I'll be interested to know how the CRA and the government comes out with new legislation around integration and how all this works, but there is still a lot of uncertainty with how all of this will be implemented. So we'll see how that goes after the June 25th effective date. 
crypto asset reporting. For those who have foreign assets abroad, there is a way for CRA to get access to this information through something called the Common Reporting Standard or CRS for short, which is a global standard developed and endorsed by the OECD for automatic exchange of financial information internationally between countries. Canada has adopted the CRS under the Income Tax Act and shares this information with foreign tax authorities in exchange for information on financial accounts held by Canadian residents outside of Canada. And with the development of crypto assets, the Budget 2024 also provides proposes the Crypto Asset Reporting Framework, or CARF for short, with a new annual reporting requirement in the Income Tax Act. This would mean that any crypto asset service providers like crypto exchanges, brokers, dealers, and even operators of teller machines would now be obligated to report to the CRA details of each customer, such as exchanges between the crypto asset and fiat currencies, exchanges for other crypto assets, as well as transfers of of the crypto asset. The purpose of this proposal is, of course, to crack down on Canadians not reporting their worldwide income, which includes crypto income, in order to combat tax evasion. So I hope that you found this video useful in summarizing the key tax changes coming up in mid-2024. Make sure that you like and subscribe for more videos like this, and check out the description box for free resources. If you want to learn more about the 2024 tax updates in Canada, make sure to check out my video over here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.